What does Diana want to say to the Queen? The first part of this video was a reading that I did yesterday and I uploaded it. And when I was doing the reading, I was so, so touched, so touched in my spirit in regards to what that tense supernatural meeting was going to be about. The King of Cups. Now you saw that as I was about to do this meeting and I had done the prep for this special, special reading. The reading was interrupted because this message is not supposed to get out. Charles has been communicating with his mother. This is the King of Cups here in the reverse. He's so upset, he's so distressed, and he's having very, very intimate conversations with the spirit of his mother. The two of them hold secrets, mother, and son, son and mother, the secrets that they, ah, they've gone into the garden, the secrets that they held together on earth are now being readdressed, re-solidified, and the oaths and promises that they made to each other. King Charles III is trying to make sure that these promises are kept in the afterlife. Three. This is one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Very fond memory. Three of cups. In reverse. You see, the issue is this. Charles doesn't understand that his mother has to address the things that she was involved in on earth. It's not something that she can hold within herself. It's something that she has to answer for. She has to release the energy. And in releasing the energy, it's likely that you and I will find out exactly what kind of oath is between mother and son, the queen and her son, Charles. So what are these secrets and what do they have to do with Diana? The King of Coins, King of Pentacles, is hiding something underneath his hard tortoise shell. Very hard. Some kind of large financial benefit that Charles reaped off of the death of Diana. There was trouble in the House of Windsor. And not exactly the way you and I would assume. It wasn't about chatty patty Diana. It wasn't about Diana. Popular, beautiful, charismatic. It wasn't about Diana. 
dated an Arab. No, it was about finances and some kind of change, some kind of financial calamity in the house of Windsor. Now, to understand it, we'd have to go back to the exact time that she died in the 1990s. What was happening politically? How that impacted the House of Windsor and how Diana's death financially benefited them all. How? But there's more. Because when I did the reading a couple days ago, there were several spirits and energies around Diana. A council of spirits, if you wish. Five of coins. What I'm picking up here is that Diana was so popular that people were willing to put money on her. She was a financial asset alive and most certainly a financial asset in death. Meaning whatever financial gift she had, which was far more than what she left her sons, upon her death, her husband and the royal kitty inherited that money. There's this giving energy, a giving energy. But then there's this poverty energy as well. And keeping her outside. On the Five of Coins, we see this church. The light is on inside of the church. The mother and child on the outside of the church. The child is crippled. The mother is in a bad way. The child follows the mother. There's a sense of keeping her away and out of the grand secrets. Keeping her away from the magic. Barring her from the major and main rituals that she used to go through when she was part of the clan. The whole part of taking away the HRH from her was to exclude her from the pack and exclude her from the privilege, and exclude her from the esoteric rituals. But she was still popular, and she was still an asset, and she still attracted major finances, with or without their rituals, with or without their say-so, because she had a different set of eyes looking upon her. So they wanted to push this idea that her being outside of the royal family would make her poor. Oh, now you'll have to work. The same thing they're doing to Meghan. Now you'll have to work. Oh, what will you and Harry do? You've got to pay for your own bodyguards now. You've got to pay for your own drawers now, etc. But the money was with Diana, not with them. She was doing tremendously well financially. She didn't lack, and she drew major attention from major scholars, or scholarship, or donors, whatever you want to call it, but she got money, lots and lots of financial attention. The next card. The moon in reverse. One of the main things that people do when they try to take away people's financial control, you can see it now, of their own assets, is have them declared insane, have them declared mad, incapable and irresponsible with their own finances and their own funds, their own fortune. But they couldn't quite do it to her. So what was the next best thing? We kind of picked up that they were trying to use the press to make her look as if she was crazy. She was loca. She was loony. She was one picnic. She was one orange short of a picnic or whatever you want to call it. That's what they said. Because they wanted to gain financial control of her wealth. 
And this is one of the issues that she has with mom, her majesty, trying to take hold of her money, greedy acts and greedy maneuvers. But what we don't know is that there was an intense campaign to portray her as somebody who was a lunatic with the moon card here in reverse there are several things going on number one they tried to do things to stop her from using her intuition so that she wouldn't keep up with their shenanigans trying to block her intuition with magicians and specialists they even had they even had a hindu healer to try and find out what her gifts and talents were and to stop and squash and dissolve, remove the energy of her intuition, send in distractions, frighten her. Many things they did. They would have people pop out of the shadows. They would have people walk past her car. They would have people walk past her window and hide all manner of things. They would send her notes. They would call her and hang up the phone. Click. Ring, 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 ring. Hello. Click. Trying to drive her crazy. Trying to block her magic, block her intuition, which she used automatically to save herself. Prince Philip, in particular, led the nasty campaign to have her labeled as a lunatic, crazy, touched by the lunacies of the moon. He was instrumental in this. Who are the people who are around? The spirits. The spirits. The spirits who are around Diana waiting for this monumentous spiritual clash. The magician in reverse. Remember I just referred to a Hindu healer where there were some other people who were pushed to the side, gotten rid of, removed and pushed out of the way because they didn't do their job properly. They had one job to do and that was to drive Diana crazy. And they couldn't do it. But at the same time, having failed the mission, having not done the job, they were not permitted to live. So they were removed. Those are some of the spirits. One, two, three around Diana who are supporting her now, who revealed everything that was going on in the background that Diana knew about. They also want to speak with Her Majesty. Part three is coming up when it's a wee bit quieter. And she, bless.
king of coins. Greedy bastard. Charles the third. Cheers. Ache. Chukudalo. Mm. 